Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts and uh, in this session we're looking at motor programs open and close loop control. So let's get started. So initially what we need to do is understand what a motor program is uh, and principally uh, motor programs are hierarchical in the sense that they uh, are superior to their subroutines. So for every motor program that you have it's considered to be a motor program or an executive motor program. And within that particular motor program, there will be subroutines. So let's try and explain what that actually means. So if we look at the skill of serving, we would say that that's a smaller section of tennis, fair enough. But what we can actually do for each one of these skills is break it down into these smaller subroutines. So initially, you could turn around and say it's the preparation, the throw of the ball into the air, and then the hitting of the, the ball. So, or we could have that as the, the ball toss, the, black, uh, the back swing, and then also the forward swing. So you can see there quite simply that each one of the skills is broken down, and uh, that's quite an important thing for a coach to know, but we'll look at that in a later session. So, in essence, what we need to be able to understand is this. The plan, or the EMP, is the whole skill. Every skill in sport is a product of a motor program. It's hierarchical, and once we've established this skill, and we've learned it, it's classified as grooved, or overlearned. So it's an important point to note there. So um, let's look at this uh, in a different context. So example of a subroutine. So if you've got someone kicking a ball, what do you think you would break that down into? So that's the executive motor program. What subroutines could you break that down into? So ones that I chose were planting the foot next to the ball. After that, you could have the forward swing and then the follow through. Three subroutines associated with a very simple skill of kicking the ball and that gives us our executive motor program or skill. Now how these are actually controlled is through different um, different types of loop control and the first one that we're going to look at is open loop control. So for this one the plan or the executive motor program is stored in the long-term memory. There is then initiated a memory trace in other words we try and recall the information that we know is the executive motor program and then after that we have an action of the working muscles and if you remember from Welford and Whiting model that was the movement effectors. Now this is a very very quick action as it just literally goes straight from the memory to the movement effectors. So it's usually associated with uh, simple skills or skills that have been really really well learned. So for example somebody catching a ball now, if I threw a ball to you, you would almost instantly catch it because you've got that executive motor program. You don't need to really think about it a lot, and it's a very quick action. Very good example of that one to use. So the memory trace is formed when the skill has been well learned, and this open loop control doesn't actually give us any feedback because it's quick. So literally, if I threw the ball and the person caught it very, very fast, therefore, there's no time for any feedback. Another thing in relation to the open loop control, which a lot of people tend to forget, is that you can't actually really change the movement during the performance. So if we looked at the person's golf swing here, this person, as soon as they start to strike the ball, or as they start the skill, there's no real opportunity for them to change or adjust through any sort of like kinesthesis or feedback. They've started the action, it's a very quick action, and it's performed before you get the opportunity to make any changes. So open loop is thought to start all motor programs. And if you think about that, that kind of makes sense. Everybody has an initial action, and then after that, you will, depending on what the skill is, have some kind of kinesthesis or some kind of feedback. But initially, you have this open loop, as a movement of some kind that you don't really need to think about. Okay. So moving on, we have the closed loop control. Now this one here 
is slightly different. So we still have our EA uh, executive motor program, our EMP, stored in our long term memory. Let's get rid of this. Go to okay. So we still have the memory trace that goes into our working muscles, the movement effectors. But what we get this time, because the loop is slightly longer, is an opportunity for some kind of feedback. And this is through kinesthesis, so our sense or feel of the actual skill. This is known as our perceptual trace. We perceive what it feels like. So, let's take this through in order. The memory trace has triggered the response. So we've had that. The memory trace triggers the response from the muscle effectors. This loop is relatively short, therefore it allows for some quick and subconscious corrections to take place. Not huge corrections or adjustments, but just these very, very quick ones via this feel, the kinesthesis. So a really good example would be uh, a downhill skier or a snowboarder. Somebody who's uh, going down the mountain and they're making very, very minor adjustments as they're going along. And it's usually subconscious. Another example you could use is somebody in gymnastics. Again, making small corrections whilst they're performing the skill. Now, even though these are subconscious corrections, your, your brain's actually able to then make those minor adjustments and then store them in the long-term memory for the next time you need them. Okay, and then the last of the loop controls is the closed loop level three. So for this one, we've got exactly as we did before. We have the the executive motor program. This is then passed via the memory trace into the working muscles or the muscle effectors, and we also have our perceptual trace as well. So what's the difference? Well, in this one, once the memory trace has been triggered. The feedback loop is actually a lot longer. And the reason for this is it's relayed back to the brain. What you have here, though, is conscious feedback via the brain. So as opposed to that subconscious, we're actually thinking about what we're doing. So this allows us to control or modify the movement. And that's a significant difference between this one and the other closed loop. So for example, it could be changing direction when dribbling. So if you've got this person down here, they're thinking about what they're doing and therefore that takes conscious feedback prior to the brain and therefore the perceptual trace will slightly change. So this entire loop is reliant on feedback and usually because we've not quite developed a feel of how the skill is supposed to be performed. Now if we take this person in the picture down here, they maybe not be um, in the autonomous phase, maybe associative or even cognitive. But probably associative because they're able to perform some basic skills, for example, dribbling. But let's compare that against somebody at a higher standard, a national standard. You could argue that that person would be using less feedback because they have a kinesthesis for the skill. Therefore, they would be losing, uh, using sorry, closed loop level two as opposed to closed loop level three. Okay. So let's just look at this um, in this uh, example we've got here. So we've got a, a gymnast, let's uh, say she's performing the beam. So open loop initiates the movement, but there's a limited amount of feedback because it's a very simple and ballistic action. So that could be a uh, jump onto the beam, and that's initiating the memory trace. Then you, in this application, you would say that they're using closed loop level two. So they're gaining feedback through kinesthesis, and that could be, for example, them balancing on the beam to make the adjustments if they needed. But they probably wouldn't be using um, closed loop level three because they're at a higher level and all they need is uh, minor adjustments. Okay? So the perceptual trace then finally completes the loop. Now, there are some drawbacks to these uh, open and closed systems that Adams has uh, come up with, and it's very simple, but um, very important to remember. If you had a, a separate plan or a memory trace needed for every single skill, 
then you could have an infinite number of motor programs and therefore you could argue that retention would be a problem and if it were possible to store all these motor programs it would be difficult to recall them in other words trying to imagine trying to file through all of those motor programs and then draw the right one out because most sports activities are done quite quickly so it wouldn't really lend itself very well to that you'd have to have a really really strong memory trace for every single skill to be able to perform them well and then lastly is the perception novel response if we're supposed to have a memory trace for every single action we've carried out how can you explain this idea of a novel response in other words when someone does something that's never been done before so think of the first time anyone saw someone do a step over where where did they actually get that information from how did they do that and or if somebody hit the uh, the ball through their legs in tennis what made them think of how to do that so in that sense there is a drawback to this actual model okay so that's the end of this um, screencast uh, what I want you to try and think about then before the session is what type of learner would you associate with each loop control alright thanks very much bye